Hello, dreamers. I just wanted to get a few thoughts down about um, starting school again because it's that time and it's that time for me too. So I want to talk a little bit about going back to school with depression. I'm going to put some links also here uh, in the description underneath this video so that if you also have some mental health issues like depression, anxiety, like I do, I can provide some resources for you because I'm not a mental health professional. Um, I'm just here to hopefully help people a little bit and to kind of get my experience and my thoughts out there about uh, what it's like going back to school is either a student or a teacher and you know, having a lot more responsibilities and worries and concerns and things that uh, seem very, very, very stressful that we want to get out there and talk about a little bit. So I know, at least for me, <laughs> it's kind of hard to get this out so um, because I can already feel a little bit of anxiety, but uh, going back to school is pretty stressful, uh, but it can all, just by itself, but it can be even more difficult if you're managing depression and anxiety. Um, I've been struggling with depression um, for, I don't know, probably as far back as I can really remember. Um, it's a struggle to balance both mental health and kind of what we might call keeping up appearances, but I was able to do it, and I learned a lot from it, and so I wanted to kind of record this video as sort of a back-to-school guide to help you, I hope, get prepared and hopefully successful in school because school is important uh, it's necessary it is a way for you to, obviously to improve yourself and your life uh, but that doesn't mean it doesn't the outcome is positive um, overwhelmingly positive uh, especially if you're using school to your advantage which i i hope you are um, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't come with um, some burdens so one technique that I have felt to be useful is called telling positive stories to yourself. Um, and I have an upcoming video about this, but it's a trick that I've been using in almost all areas of my life. Um, so it's basically trying to combat a lot of negative self-talk. So if you want to or not think about some of the disempowering uh, mean things that you tell yourself about school uh, some examples are I, i'm not smart enough to be here i'm never going to know this i don't understand why i have to know this uh, school is hard school is too hard um, i'm not naturally smart I'm not a good writer, I'm not a good reader, I'm not good at math, uh, I'm not good at taking tests. Uh, those are just some examples. Um, and the way I kind of see it is that you want to talk to yourself the way you would talk to a friend. Because you wouldn't tell your friend, um, especially you know a best friend or something like that, hey, you're not smart enough to be here. You're not good at writing. You're not good at reading. You suck at math. You can't take to... I mean, you wouldn't say that to somebody, right? So why would you say it to yourself? Um, because we're our the worst critics, I think. Um, none of these stories are inherently true. And believing them because you tell them to yourself over and over and over again, and I know that I have and still do... Um, Believing them has kind of made them true in a way. And going to school just made it, made it extra hard, made it really hard. 
So if you're telling yourself terrible stories about school, try and ask yourself what the most badass version of yourself would believe and switch those stories out. So here is an example of how I would kind of rewire or rethink um, some of those negative thoughts that I just mentioned. So if you say something to yourself like, I'm not smart enough to go to school, I'm not smart enough to, um, in the case if you're in high school and thinking about college, I'm not smart enough to go to college, Um, I'm not smart enough to go to grad school, I'm not smart enough to go to trade school or vocational school, Um, you would turn that around and say, you know, I am just as smart as anybody else at this school and I can... I can get to college. I can get to trade school or learn a trade. Um, I can. It's like it's like re- replacing those statements with "I can"s instead of "I'm not." If that makes sense. Um, if you say, for example, school is really difficult for me, and I'm just, I'm not naturally smart, and I'm not going to get it. Uh, the way to switch that thinking around is to say the right knowledge and information comes to me at the perfect time. And I'm actually one of those people who thinks that there's really no such thing as quote unquote naturally smart. I think that the right knowledge and information comes to you at the right time. I really, I really do think that if you say, I'm not a good writer. Replace that with, I've written lots of powerful and useful things in my life, and I bet that you have. If I'm not, if I say to myself, I'm not a good reader, uh, it takes, it takes practice, and I know it can be difficult, especially if, um, if there are other things besides depression and anxiety, like, um, let's say you might have a learning disability, or maybe... Um, I know I've worked with people who have dyslexia, so that in itself makes people not not want to do it, um, or at least not do it in the way that they might be asked to. Um, but in those cases, I strongly advise that you take the help that is offered to you. Because every school I know has a resource room or a resource teacher. Um, sometimes it's called, sometimes it's called resources. Sometimes it's called special services, um, and I I know that that is a stigma that some people have, and I wish that they wouldn't because um, there are wonderful, awesome teachers out there who are um, willing to help you, and I know a lot of them. Um, so please don't be afraid to ask one of those teachers for help because that's their job. And that's what they do. And a lot of people I know are very, very passionate about helping you. So um, that's something uh, I, I want you to keep in mind. If you say to yourself, I'm a poor test taker, you could replace that with, I get better and better at taking tests the more I take them. Um... And I know, a lot, especially when you get to your senior year in, in high school, a lot of, um, and this probably goes for probably just about every level I can think of, um, there's a lot of emphasis on tests because um, for a couple of different reasons. One is to make sure that you are hitting those goalposts that you need in order to you know, advance to the next level. Um, But like I said, there's so much, there's so much help out there, so much free help, you know, even outside of school. Um, And I know taking tests is such a drag. I know it is. Uh, But it is, it's true, like, same with reading and writing and math. You get better and better the more that you take them. So um, what I found to be helpful, because I'm a very kind of visual-oriented person, um, is just to Google, I'm sorry, not Google, um... YouTube, a couple of uh, different videos that might be helpful. So if you are, uh, there's, there are so many videos out there like on YouTube about you know, how you can 
you know, better prepare for tests or better um, manage your anxiety about taking tests and stuff like that. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff out there, so that's one way to take advantage of that. So that that's one that's one trick that I use is kind of taking those negative things that I say about myself, um, and those are just some examples of things I've heard from teachers and students. Um, is kind of kind of retelling those stories. So if you say something negative, you turn it into a positive. You know, I I suck at reading, but um, I can become a good reader the more that I practice, which I hope I hope makes some sense. Um, the second uh, idea that I use, or second trick that I use, uh, is something that I kind of get caught up in a little bit, and I get a little anxious about it, but um, I use it a lot, and that is to make a plan. Uh, with this, you identify what the most difficult parts of school will be, and make a plan for how you can deal with them. Um, I kind of call this my sort of exit strategy. I think Stephen King calls it something else. I don't remember what it is at the moment, but um, it's make a plan and trying to anticipate what those situations could be and how your what your exit plan is going to be and how you can deal with them. So if you struggle, for example, with something that's a difficult part of school is test anxiety. So if you struggle with test anxiety, Make a plan for how you can cope with that anxiety when you have to take the test. Uh, will you be extra prepared by reaching out to your teacher or you know the resource people, or um, even just going on you know Google and YouTube and trying to help you? That's extra preparation. Will that help you? Could you schedule an extra study session for yourself? Again, you know, you know, looking at some ideas that maybe your teacher can come up with because that's part of their job too is you know is helping you come up with a plan to succeed so you know use those use those people who are there to help you and even if they seem stressed or busy or distracted which they often are um and I can kind of speak for myself this way um just because they might seem a little distracted because you know it's it's a it's a whirlwind for everybody. So um, even if they f- seem a little distant, still ask them anyway because seriously, it's part of their job. Um, and if if they can't do it right then, they can at least you know come up with a study plan for you or point you in the right direction. At the very least, they can do that. And another good resource because I didn't mention this, I said in Google and YouTube, but I, I didn't mention this and I should have is of course the library. And I know that at the school that we have, um, the library is kind of shrinking as, you know, computers and technology sort of kind of take over. Um, but in some places there are, st- there's still, you know, a full-time library. And, and even if there isn't one at school, there always is one in your county. So that is another resource that uh, you should really, really take advantage of if you don't already have one. If you're a university or college student, then you're definitely going to have resources there. Um, I'm kind of thinking more about high school kids, but this also probably applies to college students too. So, so you have a, so those are a whole bunch of resources right there. Your teacher, um, you know, the resource aides or research, resource teachers. Um, tutors, the library, I mean, they're all there. And if you're, especially if you're in college, your fees, your students, I think it's a student activity fee or something along those lines. Um, they actually pay for that. And so that's comes up. So that's all free. Um, because that's included with your tuition. So just putting that out there. So if you want to, if you want to help relieve that anxiety, you could schedule an extra study session for yourself with, say, a tutor or a peer. Um, a lot of places in high school and college have peer tutors, so you don't have to feel weird talking to, you know, an old person um, or somebody you think is going to judge you or something. Like that. I promise you, they're not there to judge. They're there to help. So, I, again, I'm I'm talking from experience. So another thing you can do in your making a plan section is does 
exercise help alleviate your anxiety? I know it does for me when I do it, and I'm not always very good at doing it. Um, but sort of getting out the, those extra jitters by taking a walk or going on the treadmill or swimming or whatever it is that you do um, can also help kind of take care of some of that anxiety. Could you maybe get out an extra workout, you know, maybe before the test? That could actually help, you know, that could actually help. Um, is there maybe a meditation or something that is calming that you can listen to before the test? Um, like this video, um, or maybe another ASMR video, or, um, maybe just an app if you have a meditation app that just does, you know, sounds and no voices or something like that. Um, that's another, um, <clears throat> I know something that I use a lot is meditation apps that help, um, at least calm down some of that anxiety. So having a good idea about what challenges you will have, um, or challenges with your mental health during school will help you make a good plan. So what I, what might be helpful is to make a T chart and that will, if you, hopefully you know what a T chart is by now, but, um, you basically draw a T on your, a piece of paper or on Google Docs or whatever you like to use. And on one side, you would put all of those things that, um, that are, you're, that you're struggling with. And on the other side, your action plan. So when I feel this anxiety, I'm going to go exercise. When I feel, um, this anxiety, and I know you can't do that, like right in the middle of school, I'm talking like before or after school, um, or even at recess, I mean, you probably could do that if, but probably not a lot of people would, um, unless you're, uh, you know, in a safe place that you can do that. Um, you know, something like that. So here's what I'm having trouble with on this side. And on the other side, this is how, this is my plan for dealing with it. When I feel that, um, well, you know, depression never really goes away, but I'm, when I really feel terrible about myself what am I going to do to counteract that and will it always work probably well, I, I can't say sometimes it doesn't work because this is this is what we call the challenge um you know I don't pretend that this is some sort of be all solution because it's not but it's something um so having a good idea about what challenge you will have will help you have a good mental health plan. Um, it's also a good idea to identify what things you can do for self-care, um, which is so important. Self-care is so important, especially when you have high anxiety and depression like I do. Um, so self-care on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So that's another thing you can put on your paper besides the T-chart is what am I going to do daily for self-care? What am I going to do weekly and what am I going to do monthly? Um, and that is what helps. If you stick to it, that is what helps you keep functioning high. Um, it's so easy to stop doing the things that make us feel good and improve our mental health. Doing the things that make us feel good um, when we get super busy or stressed. Because it's not a priority for us. Um, at least it's not for me. So make a self-care plan and, you know, make a commitment to yourself that you're going to prioritize your mental health during the school year. Um, and I, I, I really do want to say I think that it makes a difference. It has made a difference for me. Does that mean my anxiety and depression has magically disappeared? No, of course not. Um, because I don't know if it ever really does. Um. But it has helped. I can I can say that for sure. It definitely has helped. Because now I have this list. And I'm a big list maker. So um, having a list, having a plan makes me feel so much better that I have. Okay, when this happens, I do this. When that happens, I do that. And then when I go home, I can do this. Um, and it's a lot more constructive than, you know, some other things. So um, the third thing that I wanted to talk to you about was... Uh, something I mentioned already, and that was identifying resources at your school. So, um, I know I was fortunate um, to have access to uh, uh, 
some therapy during my high school years, although that was kind of a while ago. Uh, but there are a lot of those, um, I don't know if you want to call them therapists. I mean, and counselor is also another word, but they also, I think they call it something else now that's not, not therapist, not counselor, but um, whatever they're called at your school. Find out what your school has available for students to help. Sometimes they even have peers, especially when you get close to college. Although they do it sometimes in, in high school, too. Um, so many, you know, uh, I know, in, like, psychology students and um, people who are going into social work and stuff like that. Um, so, again, if you feel kind of weird talking to, if you're younger and you feel weird talking to an adult or not safe talking to an adult because, you know, of past issues or whatever, there are tons of peer resources out there, especially at the college level. So find out what your what resources your school has available um, that will help you manage your mental health and then start taking advantage of them ASAP. So um, this way you don't have to wait until you have, um, you know, an episode or a breakdown. Uh, you don't have to wait until things are really bad to take advantage of the mental health resources at your school. And I promise you that they are there and they exist. Um, and nobody has to know. These are totally confidential. Um, and just because you, you, you know, let's say somebody, if you're in high school, this is more important than high school than college, because college, nobody cares. But if you go into the counselor's office and, you know, somebody sees you and said, you know, what are you doing in the counselor's office, crazy person? Um, first of all, you tell them it's none of their business. And second, if if you really want a blanket explanation, you can just say that you are talking about academic advisement, uh, because counselors do that too. So it's really kind of none of their business, to, you know. But if you really need a cover story, you know that has not even because you don't want to share anything about your um, your mental health issues, which is totally your business anyway. Um, then you can always say that you know I'm I'm, I'm talking about you know academic issues, not um, not anything you need to be concerned about, nosy person. So that's that's kind of a story I I would often use I'm cuz I was planning to go to college and in, in high school so um if I needed to visit the counselor I was I'm going there for academic um advisement and you know um that usually worked pretty well so um my other tip about that would be to go to a therapist before you have um or or as you feel something terrible breaking down in you. So um, don't wait until things are, are really bad to take advantage of those resources. Um, I know that when I was in college, um, I had access to free weekly therapy sessions, um, which is great when you're a poor student because you know people pay hundreds of thousands, not thousands, well... Uh, maybe there are places where you pay thousands, but usually it's like a couple hundred bucks a month um, to see a therapist. And so if you're in college, you know, you get all that stuff for free, which is really good. Um, and also, um, and again, this is more of the college level, but um, there are uh, student support groups. And, um, it you know, of course, it varies from school to school. So... I would find out if your school offers any kind of student-run support group. And of course, and again, this is for college too, uh, they usually offer a free gym membership or access to the free, um, uh, what do we call it? I don't remember. Maybe it was the student center. I'm not sure. But there was, as long as you had a student ID, you could go and use um, the gym for, or the workout center, whatever it's called, um, for free with your ID. So take advantage of that. I, I totally would. I, I did when I was there. Um, but do it now. <laughs> do it now. Uh, because I think that would be really helpful. If you're in high school, you know, there are still, um, usually the gym and track is usually taken up by different teams. And if you're not on the team, then, you know, oh well. Uh, but there are definitely other ways to work out that don't cost any money. So, um, okay, I think I'm on three, four, four, um, is keeping a journal. So I'm a big, big, big fan of journaling because I taught writing for a really long time. I still do. 
and um, I have a couple of mental health journal prompts here. Um, so if your school doesn't have good services for mental health, and that's very rare that they wouldn't, but just let's just say that they don't, um, there are still a ton of free online resources that you can use for your mental health. Um, and I'll link to a couple of them here at the bottom. You could, There are mental health related podcasts you can check out that are free. Um, there's a mental health planner. Like I said, I, I suggested some prompts in the T-chart and everything else for your mental health plan. Um, but there's also like a mental health planner that you can use to help manage your mental health. Um, there are so, uh, some online support groups, uh, starting with Facebook. And then, you know, you can um, check out some other ones. Facebook's probably the only one I really know a whole lot about. I would think that maybe there might be some in other places. I'm sure that they exist. I'm just not very familiar with them. Um, so in case, just in case, especially if you're a high school student and you're kind of trying to keep things, you know, under wraps and because high school and college are different, you know, in high school, you're usually, you know, kind of at the mercy of, um, your age and your parents and in college, of course, you have a little bit more freedom. So that's, I'm trying to take both both into consideration. Besides resources online, um, you can also identify uh, who your support system is. Um, and I know <laughs> this is kind of a weird confession, but um, I kind of didn't really have a support system myself. Not in high school, I didn't. Um, more, it was better in college, but in high school, mm -mm. um that was kind of actually the problem was I really didn't have a support system. Um, but hopefully you do and you're going to, um, I hope, make use of that and make sure to spend time nurturing those friendships and relationships. So if you are or if you do have people who really, really care about you, you are very, very lucky. And I'm glad that you have that. If you don't, um, I would start seeking online to see, you know, what you can find as long as you're safe. Um, I know it's, it, it feels weird to say that you don't want to be the person who only, um, you know, talks to their friends and family only when you're in a crisis because then, then your anxiety and depression builds even more because, you know, you feel like you're the Debbie Downer and nobody wants to talk to you because you're always negative and, that's why people feel like they want to run away from you and, you know, I, speaking from experience, but, um, but spending time nurturing your relationships and putting energy into supporting other people can also help. So sometimes it helps to kind of get out of your head a little bit. And, um, if you reciprocate and say, Hey, I'm here for you too. Um, whoever's in your support system, um, then they won't always, you know, say, hey, you only come to me when you're negative, which, um, I hope is not a lot of people, so, um, another resource, and this kind of circles back to the library, is I'm a huge fan of reading, um, I'm, I'm a teacher in that area, so I'm a huge fan of reading self-help books that you can find, and I, I can recommend some, if, your, especially if your school doesn't offer therapy or counseling in that in that way, um, and audiobooks, you know, they're different than podcasts because podcasts are usually slightly different and and, and the, they can be a good resource. But you might find a book that you really, really, really like, uh, and if you have a library card, chances are they are probably available through. Um, one of the library apps like Hoopla or, um, darn it, there's another one I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, but, um, <clears throat> like I said, if you have a library card, a lot of stuff is free for you. Um, also another trick that I like to use is figuring out your priorities. Uh, it is really tough to balance work with school, with family, and dating if you're dating and friends 
um, while you're in school. So get clear on what you want from your time. And this is where, you know, a counselor can help you is help you manage your time with a time management plan. Um, and that's, that's why I suggested with the T chart and everything else. So that could be super helpful. So get clear on what you want from your time, what you want from school and connect to the reasons why you want to go to that school. What advantages will getting an education offer you? And I do really hope that you, um, make sh- I really, if, if you're in high school, I really, really hope, um, that you're not considering just just throwing in the towel. Um, I want you to graduate. I want I want you all to graduate. I want you all at least to have your high school diploma at the very very least. Um, if you choose to go have on to you know career training outside of college, that is totally cool. But at least finish school. Get get your GED or your diploma. Diploma. Um, you know I worked in high school for a really long time, so. Um, but just think about what you what you want out of school and what you want after school or after graduation, I'd to say. Um, you know, really, really start putting some effort into thinking about that. Getting clear on what your long term vision is for your goal can help you prioritize what you want out of your time. So make sure the way that you're spending your time reflects what you want to get out of life and the future that you want to create and your priorities in life. Um, so this is where journaling is going to come in super, um, I hope, super helpful to you. Um, and I kind of, this is my last point um, for journaling, and that is um, thinking about your health, like your physical health. So um, I know that when I was in school, uh, I almost always skip meals. And I almost skipped sleep. <laughs> and you wonder why I was so cranky and stuff all the time. So looking back at, especially when I in, got into college, college was, you know, not a time for sleeping. Uh, but looking back at those times, um, I kind of wonder how I even graduated from college. But um, by the time I finished my levels of functioning were at like an all time low. Um, So make a commitment to yourself to study in a healthy way that doesn't involve skipping sleep and trading meals for coffee or cigarettes in my case, or coffee and cigarettes in my case. Um, Because, you know, as much as we would like coffee and cigarettes to be nutritious, they are not. And if only we could live on them, you know, I'm kidding, but only a little bit. So our culture tends to kind of glorify people who are super busy all the time with exclamation points. Um, If I'm super busy, it means I have a life. And if I have a life, then I can't be sad. And if I uh, if I just schedule everything and if if I'm super, super busy, I can't think about this. Uh, And sometimes it works. Sometimes distractions work, but more often than not, they are um, more detrimental than anything because it runs you down. And you, the more run down you are, the worse your, your, the worse your anxiety and depression is going to be. So, so our culture does tend to kind of glorify uh, being too busy to take care of yourself. But this can really take a toll on both on your mental and your physical health. So, uh, and I know especially when you're a poor college student. Um, it can be hard to eat healthier, um, but try to make a, an effort at least one, at the very least, one meal a day. Try to, and that's just conservative, meaning um, if you can do more, do more. But at least try to make a, an initial goal of eating one healthy meal a day with some some kind of fruits and vegetables. Um, and getting a little bit of exercise, even if you just walk around the block for, you know... 10 15 minutes they there's some research out there and i don't have it in front of me but um even 15 minutes or even 20 would be better of of walking can really really help um some of the chemicals in your brain so i would totally recommend that um keeping your physical body can have a huge positive impact on your mental health so schedule 
schedule someday. I usually do this on Sunday, which is the day I'm recording this, actually, um, in which to prep healthy meals for the week so that you have healthy food made ahead of time. And, you know, Pinterest is great for that because it's all over the place. And all you, all you have to do is Google meal prep on Pinterest and voila, it's all made for you. Um, like I just did that today where I set out all my veggies and all my Tupperware containers and, um, you know, how I'm going to do each meal. And, you know, they're all high in protein and they have a bunch of veggies and no carbs. Um, so that is... Um, one way to help not be tempted by, oh, I'm so tired, I'm just going to run to McDonald's. or, Which, you know, I I can say that is something I, you know, I do. I am, I am by no means, you know, a perfect individual. Sometimes I'm just like, screw it, I'm just going to go get a hamburger. Um, even though I know it's bad for me, but, you know, I'm too tired to do anything else. Um, and if you do have days like that, it's okay, you know. Um, make make peace as long as it's not every day then you know that's that's probably going to be a problem but um if you if you go don't beat yourself up for having fast food every once in a while it's uh it's not the healthiest for you but it's you know if it's once in a while you know so be it um so trying to go to school i'm not going to try to wrap it up here while managing mental illness can be super tough so be extra kind to yourself during this time and don't beat yourself up. Um, I know when I was in school, um, both high school and college, I would always, always, and I still do this with, you know, my colleagues, um, always compare myself to other people and, you know, especially girls. Um, and I know that this is kind of a confession for me. I get really, um, really anxious around pretty girls because I don't really think that I'm all that pretty. So, uh, my anxiety goes through the roof when I see someone who's got just perfect, smooth, straight hair and the pretty, you know, eyelashes and, um, perfect makeup. And it seems like they have perfect everything. And it, you have to kind of remind yourself that, you know, nobody is perfect, including, including me, including, you know, other people. So, I'm trying to do better at that, so I'm not, I'm not saying that I have all the answers. I can just say that I have some things that have worked for me. So it's your journey. You're on your own journey. So um, try to take advice from somebody who, who does this sometimes. Just don't compare yourself to other people because you don't know what they're going through either. You know, um, Take extra good care of yourself while you're in school. Um, and like I said, I'll drop a couple of mental health links here on the bottom. Um, and I think that's probably going to wrap up this. This isn't... I kind of meant this to be an ASMR video. It seems like it's more of something else. But I hope that you at least found it somewhat interesting. And I hope helpful. Um... School uh, starts tomorrow, and uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm kind of tongue-tied now because I'm just like, oh, just saying it out loud just kind of made it go right to the top. But, whew, it you know, the beginning of a new school year always brings a lot of anxiety. I'm, I'm thinking about all the ways I'm going to fail, which I know is not what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm trying to catch myself and retrain my brain to think um and and tell my tell my brain positive stories so oh one one last thing i forgot was that art um i taught art for a little while and that can also be a great way to release some anxiety i might actually be doing some coloring after this so um which is also on my twitch channel but that's a different story um some prompts that i found for um, for kind of a creative outlet for anxiety and depression are, um, let's see here, art prompts for, as far as, you know, this is, can also be considered a form of art therapy for anxiety and depression. Uh, number one, a superhero and villain drawing. So in this prompt, you would draw the problem or fear as a villain. 
and draw yourself is the huge superhero and i can hear people saying i don't know how to draw uh, in that case if you're really that intimidated by it you could probably print out some pictures from um you know from wherever as long as it's in your journal and and or make collages from which i really really love to do um you know make collages from you know newspapers and magazines and whatnot so um so this actually helps draw out the problem as something that can be fought and i really like the imagery of you as a superhero and you know your anxiety or a test or depression or whatever it happens to be as the villain so if you actually kind of put it on paper in like an artistic way um whether it's drawing or printing out pictures or however you're gonna you're however you're gonna do that um that that can also be like a great mental health exercise um when you're doing like a superhero versus villain type of art project whatever it happens to be um how you know think about what kind of traits and skills that superhero would need in order to defeat that villain you know think of you know your sidekicks or other heroes like um if you have a if you have a supportive parent a supportive teacher a supportive friend any of those can be you know kind of involved in your kind of improv comic sort of um and you can enlist their help if needed so you know i i really love to use art um to help externalize my problems or feelings so uh, that could be a whole other <laughs> a whole other show um another art prompt is changing the story so you could draw or find you know a picture representative of what you're worried about like for example what would the worst possible day at school look like um and then you could talk about your fears or write or you know not talk but um you know draw it out or collage it or whatever you want to do um and so you put your fears on the page and you help challenge yourself uh, by these unthoughtful thought or unhelpful thoughts that are revealed in the picture. So you explore, you're exploring and challenging your fear by creating a new story or picture that reflects a more balanced thought about school. So after you've thought about what your worst day is going to be like of course the flip side of that would be can you draw or put together a picture uh, of your best day at school um and lastly uh, a visual routine and this is helpful for people who are non usually nonverbal, or um if you have autism or because i work i i'm saying this because i work with kids with autism and this is something that i've used a lot is what to do pictures um some worries are related um to not knowing what to do in a certain situation so that kind of goes back to that management plan that i was talking about before is um you know, not knowing what to expect can make your anxiety just go. You know, I don't want, I don't know what to expect with this teacher. I don't know what to expect with the situation or my parents or whatever happens to be. So having a routine and a plan to, for what to expect and a plan to handle different problems can make a super big difference in helping your anxiety. So drawing or, you know, other art methods can help solidify your plan even further so if you're creating a routine or schedule, as you know, I think you should because if you know that's at least it's helpful to me. Um, you could draw or have a picture represent each step. So if um, you're addressing a fear about how to handle something, you could draw a picture um, or a representation of that. Uh, successfully managing that situation you can create even like a like an art journal i have an art journal um that there i know that there's usually more than one worry that you have to plan for so um okay so i'm really wrapping it up <laughs> this time because i know i've gone on for almost 45 minutes now i didn't think i would be able to talk that long but i guess i did so um I hope that anybody listening to this has a good first day and many to come after this. And 
um, you know, we can, we can do this. We can get through this. So that's all I'm going to say for right now, dreamers. So carry on and, um, let's go back to school.